Vincent J. Tomeo is an accomplished author and poet known for his book The Usefulness of Hippopotamus, a humorous chapbook for trying times. Inspired by the dancing hippopotamus in Disney's Fantasia, Vincent's wit and creativity led him to pen a poem that blossomed into this charming collection. And Vincent is of course here with us. How are you today? I'm fine, sir. I woke up. Yeah, well that's always good to wake up isn't it yes it is so what inspired you to write the chapbook specifically on this topic well i was um, dealing with the pandemic and cancer it's going through the treatment and i did not want to get into a funk i wanted to think positive so i sat down and i thought of fantasia and the hip in, the dancing hippopotamus and this made me laugh yeah and so uh i wrote a poem about a hippopotamus and that evolved into a book the wow. uh, usefulness of hippopotamus hopefully it could help other people going through a, a difficult times or uh, i want to bring cheers and uh laughter because laughter is the best medicine yeah absolutely in your experience there how did laughter and humor personally help you during your struggles with bladder cancer and of course the pandemic as well the uh, treatment is worse than the disease so uh going through the treatment i really wanted to think positive and say okay this too shall come to pass to quote abraham lincoln yeah and uh so I, I I laughed and I thought of things that were pleasant and pleasing and that and it certainly helped me through. Yes. How do you believe that humor can positively impact on people's well-being, especially during the most challenging times? Definitely, I believe that uh, during the most challenges during the most challenging times is when we need humor the most. Yeah. Um, because how do you? It, it's very difficult enough to cope with a, a trying situation. Situation. So try to, you know, make it somewhat light by adding a little humor. I always yeah. say the world needs uh, two more dozen of, uh, you know, comedians, <laughs> Carol Burnett's. In the book as well, it suggests kind of finding humor in unexpected places. Were there any places that you discovered humor in unlikely situations while you were writing the book? Yes. Uh, during the pandemic, I often go uh, into a cemetery where I, you know, because the dead aren't going to kill me. Yeah. And it was a great place to walk. It was a garden, the birds and the trees and, and the leaves and just lovely. And I could take my mask off and I could walk the park. Yeah. And one day, and I and I met a lot of people. In fact, I wrote a book, uh, My Cemetery Friends, on the people that I met in the cemetery. And it's a celebration of life. It has nothing to do with death. But one time I was in the cemetery and uh, there was a man, he had his three children with him. And somehow we, we got to talk and one of the one of his children said how old are you and i said i'm 70 and and uh, the little girl said is that why you're so short <laughs> <laughs> So, it's a, you know, sometimes uh, uh, funny things come out of the, the mouth of babes, right? Yeah. Uh, it's unfiltered. But, you know, uh, so uh, I laughed and I thought that was funny. And that is absolutely the epitome of unexpected places to find humour because a cemetery is probably one of the most unfunny locations, isn't it? It's a cemetery, yes. Because we think of a cemetery, you know, there go I but for the grace of God, our own immortality. You know, it's not forever. But I don't think of it that way. I think of it as a garden. And uh, when I'm in a garden, I like to uh, savor the flowers and the plants. And I like to uh, uh, spice it up with a little cheer and laugh. Sometimes I go with friends and we walk the three and a half miles of the cemetery yeah. every day, almost every day. So it's, it's really good. Yeah. Cemeteries must be great because there's people dying to get in there. Oh, yes. No pun intended, right? Yeah. But not only that, that that's our legacy too. That's our history. That's our ancestors. That's our, uh, each person tells a story. I'm sure that uh, on every one of those graves, gods, you know, if they were to tell their stories, uh, it, it might be quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. When you were writing this book, The Usefulness of Hippopotamus, did you face any obstacles along the way? 
No, I I always set aside uh, time to write, and I don't want to be bothered by telephone calls or anything, t- TV or any any of yeah. that nonsense. Yeah. So when I uh, thought of the uh, Fantasia and the dancing hippos, it made me laugh, and so I wrote a poem about a hippo, and then from that I wrote the whole book. Um, I think it was almost in the uh, you know like two sittings. Did you ever struggle to balance the humor with the sensitivity, especially given? what you were going through at the time. I'm going to read you one poem, and I think that'll answer your question. Charging a cell phone. My son visited me in the hospital. The whole time he was on his cell phone. I was on life support, struggling to breathe, survive. His phone was losing its charge, so he pulled the plug to charge his cell phone. Tomorrow, there will be a virtual funeral. I wrote that during the height of the pandemic. (laughs) Yeah, it's quite something, I think. It's humorous, but perhaps also says a lot about the world today. Yes, it does because uh, the cell phones are only what they're only what ten years old, and yet they're yeah. a blessing and a curse. You can't be with them. You can't be without them. And wherever yeah. you go, uh, I sometimes when I do my walk, I leave the cell phone home. And then yeah. when I get home, people say to me, "Why didn't you? Why didn't you answer the phone? Where were you?" Blah, blah, blah. I said I was uh, flirting with nature. I have no time for the phone. Hey, exactly. listen, we did we did uh, okay without it before. Why do you have to be on the phone? Every Every minute. It's ridiculous. You've got to leave your phone at home when you go for a walk because otherwise you won't kind of embrace the nature, will you? That's right. It, it will destroy the uh, the mellifluousness and the continuity of your walk with nature because it, while you're walking, you may notice uh, a butterfly or a, a, there's a fox in the cemetery. And yeah. So this fox, I feed the fox. And so I, now he knows me and he stays a distance away. But he waits for me because he knows I'm going to bring him food. Uh, So I bring food and then I'll be walking in the cemetery and he'll be walking parallel to me. Like he befriended me. Uh, I guess that's his way of saying thank you. So... It's interesting that in a cemetery <laughs> you have a fox. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I, uh, I'm gonna. Can I read you a little poem about the usefulness of hippopotamus? Yes, of course. All right, this is what launched a thousand ships, as we say. The usefulness of hippopotamus, blubber in water, who hears with his petite feet, funny little stubs, four legs, four feet, a commanding pompous size, roaming the river. Its tiny humorous ears wave and flutter, a wonder it hears at all as it wades, waddles, wiggles in the mud, dunking while taken in the sun to catch a million rays. It becomes a dining room table for birds and other living things. Here he comes, out of the water to graze, eating the grass, dropping his dung for other beasts to munch. This is lunch. <laughs> Paving <laughs> a route, creating streams, roads for other animals to navigate their way. Lovely. It's funny and it's humorous, but it's also, ha- it also tells you they have a role. Yeah. They have a function and they do, uh, they, they, they create uh, streams for other animals. And uh, it's like, it, it, everything's recycled, you know? Yeah. It's a perfect balance there of humour and seriousness, I suppose, as we mentioned earlier. Were all your poems kind of about your own experiences and, I guess, maybe serious messages? Because, of course, you mentioned earlier about the one on life support. Or were there some that were, like, maybe completely lighthearted with no serious message behind them? I take life seriously, but I put a little twist on and try to be cheerful and humour because I really feel humour is the best medicine. I, I've had some trying experience and I was once on life support, so I know what that means. Uh, I had had, uh, I have cancer, but aside from that, I had COVID pneumonia and I was in a hospital in Sicily. And that was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? On Easter, they served me spaghetti and meatballs. It was great. In the hospital, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. But was it good? It was delicious. Homemade, <laughs> Italian. How could it go wrong? Wow. Amazing. Of course, this book and humour generally has helped you through some difficult times. So do you hope this book will help others who are either going through difficult times or just help them generally because we could all do with a laugh 
I think it could help everybody. It could help uh, young kids that are angry. Maybe they could laugh and maybe think and reflect and take out their anger somewhere else. It could help people that are going through trying times and are frightened and afraid. And maybe they need a little uh, a laugh or a cheer up, you know, to cheer up. And uh, that's what I want to do. I, I, I want to share this with as many people as possible. And hopefully they will uh, find humor and solace and peace in, in their trying times because everyone has a story and everyone goes through uh, confronts it indifferently it's, it's how you confront, confront that trying time And are you working on any more books at the moment? That's interesting I uh, have 1,145 pieces of literature published uh, with two books essays short stories poems so I guess I could probably put them into a manuscript uh, but I, I kind of need a little more time <laughs> Yeah so, I'll, I'll do it when I get time. And in the meantime, this book is, of course, called The Usefulness of Hippopotamus, a humorous chap book for trying times. Where are all the places that we're able to get it? Well, I'm sure you could ask your library, but I'd rather you buy it. Yes. <laughs> go, go to Amazon. Um, I guess you could buy it through uh, the, the publisher, Atmosphere Press. But I think Amazon is the best bet. Uh, and you could go and you could uh, read the critiques some people have written on on the book yeah. uh, and you could even go to my blog if you want and my blog is vincent j tomio all lowercase dot com that's vincent b-i-n-c-e-n-t j as in uh Juliet ja James yeah. uh, and Tomeo T-O-M-E-O dot com yes. yes and I do that because I was a teacher and you know how many times you have to repeat yourself I would tell yeah. you, please uh, make sure you put the heading on the paper and of course they didn't put the heading on the paper yeah. and I would tell them once twice three times so I said okay if you don't put the heading on the paper I'm going to give you a zero because I don't have your paper you didn't hand it in you didn't exist you didn't do it yeah oh then they start putting their paper <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah well, many thanks for joining us today. It's been great to talk to you. Same to you. Be well, be happy, be cheerful and read my book and yes. spread it around. But don't give it away. Let them go buy it.